nation that you call yours, people can do what has been done to our children in West Cameroon. I call it West Cameroon because you will never take it out of our mouths again because that is a territory in which we believe in freedom. To go out on the street and demonstrate is a basic right for us. And that is why we are saying that there are two Cameroons that came together. If you are telling us, like a state minister stood here last year and told us that what happened in Cameroon is like dropping a few cubes of sugar into a basin of water. Who is the sugar and who is the water? I'm asking the government bench of Cameroon. Who is that you rape our children? My brother's daughter has been raped in Boya. I swear to you, the government of this country, does the president of this country know that the governors and the DOs and all the administrators you are sent to West Cameroon are out there behaving exactly like an army of occupation? Our people have no way to go. We have made all the efforts. Our ancestors and our forefathers trusted you to go into a gentleman's agreement that two people who considered themselves brothers could go to live together. Uh, if this is what you show us after 55 years, then those who are saying that we should break Cameroon are right. They are correct. The people of West Cameroon cannot be your slaves. The people of West Cameroon are not. You did not conquer them in war. If this is what you are saying that we should live in, I say simply, no, it will not work. How do you have an army that's supposed to protect children? Step out there, beat them, and rape some. It is not heard of in any country. This is the 21st century, and anybody who does that, I cannot be willing for his government to pay the price. We will exact it on you. Because you are making us believe that we went to the wrong place. What is there to say? I want the world to know and to have it on record that we have made efforts. I have sat with ministers and listened to them talk. The first one was the then Minister of Justice, Amadou Ali. Ten years ago, and I took my time, drove from Como to Yaoundé to tell him something is brewing out there. This thing that you people are sending gendarmes to beat people up and say all of these things, there is pain in West Cameroon. And as Minister of Justice, be very careful what happens there. And he turned around, looked at me, and told me, Mr. Wilbur, it is your people who choose to come here. He is alive. He told me. Last week, I went to see the Minister of Higher Education, Professor Fahmin Dongo, and I told him, the problems in Cameroon, the problem we have in West Cameroon, is the problem that will bring down Cameroon. If you do not handle it well, you will not know Cameroon as it is in a few months or in a few years. When people have had pent-up anger and pain, humiliation, for over 50 years, when it bursts out, you will never be able to control it. And I told him, and simply what he asked me was, Qu'est-ce que vous allez faire? Because you have your army of occupation out in West Cameroon, you believe that when the people will rise, even if you took the whole of the French army and added to yours, you will never bring them down. And we have no need for that. We don't have any need for that in the 21st century. I was one of the believers in a unified Cameroon. And I want to tell this house that what has happened to those children in Buya University and in Baminda has convinced me that the people who say Cameroon should go in two parts are correct. And there are more and more of us out there who now believe that it is the ultimate end. I listened the other night, an offer of uh, a thousand jobs, an offer of uh, two billion francs for lay schools, and I laughed at myself. Are my people slaves? So you now take them to be your dogs. 
that you can beat and wound and maim, break their bones, then throw a piece of meat for them to fight over. It has to end. If we, the people of West Cameroon, have to continue doing what we are doing, it is because we believe that the more is always the merrier. When you have more people, you have more chances of surviving in life. If the more people who are the people of East Cameroon have proven to us that our blood means nothing, then it is time for us to say it will soon be over. I want to give you a quote here in this house that I borrowed from the American liberators. When injustice becomes law, resistance becomes a duty. The people of West Cameroon have a duty to resist your oppression. I call it oppression because of what I've seen in the field. Let me quote you another two instances. Three weeks ago, there was an incident in Bangalore, which is a neighboring village to Jakiri, where I come from. And I don't know what it was about, and a Yandam officer was killed. And the forces of law and order under the instructions of the SD of Ngokitunya move into Jakiri, a neighboring village, and take away a hundred men. Just beat them up, break their bones, and then just leave them there. And I went to that place where he took these people, and I told him, Mr. SDO, you are going to release my people. He sent soldiers to me, and one of them told me, I said, I am the representative of these people because I'm a parliamentarian. And the guy, young man, turned around and asked me, kwa? Oni pa isi And he drew a line on the ground to tell me, if you cross here, you will see the consequences. Unfortunately for him, I happen to be a descendant of the warriors, so nobody draws a line before me. And I crossed, and I told him, shoot me. I told the SDO, release my people. In 12 hours, he released them. But some are still lying in the hospital. They beat and kicked a woman and she miscarried, a pregnant woman. And nobody can question this. That is the reason in this master plan to finish our culture and our people, you have chosen that every single administrator or every commander of the army is from East Cameroon. That is why they sit there and they can kill the people without remorse. This has to end. Mr. President, Mr. Speaker, I want to repeat this quote. When injustice becomes law, resistance becomes a duty. We, the people of West Cameroon, will resist you. And if you want to take that territory by force, you will kill to the last man before you take it. And you can start from me today. You can start from me. It has to end. Somebody has to know that this is not how you treat a people. 50 years is too long. 50 years is a very, very long time. And we come here and sit, just talking about the budget. You normalize murder. You normalize rape. Mr. Speaker, I am sorry to tell you that this is part of the resistance. You will hear me to the end. When injustice becomes law, resistance becomes a duty. It is my duty to defend my people. You will not stop me because of lack of time. Or if you want to, you can call your brutal gendarmes to come and kill me here. I will not. I will not. I want you to hear this, Mr. Speaker, that my people are suffering and that the cube of sugar that was defined in this house are you just angry, Mr. Speaker, that the person you consider your slave, a slave has risen in the master's house and is asking a question? I have. Mr. Speaker, I'm telling you this is part of my resistance, and you will hear me to the end. Bring the brutal soldiers who raped our daughters to take me out of here. I will say it to my end. I will say it to the end. There is nothing you can do to me. I'm wondering whether His Excellency, the President of the Republic, knows that the governors and the deals are behaving exactly when they are posted to West Cameroon as colonial masters. When they abuse people and insult them and do all they have done, we have to resist 
and we have to tell you our people will not be brought down because we came into this union as equal partners. Yes, sir. And I am done. And I am done. And we will resist. And there is nothing you can do to stop us because this is part of our culture that we inherited. You people who fear every administrator and every ruler, we challenge our rulers, we take them to task, and that is why they are accountable. Thank you very much. mettre sur pied un programme d'urgence de réhabilitation et de mise à niveau de toutes ces formations sanitaires victimes d'accidents. Et en évoquant cela, Monsieur le ministre, je ne peux m'empêcher de soulever le cas de l'hôpital de district de Bebda, qui n'importe que la, dé la désignation et pour lequel je vous avais saisi il y a deux ans. À ce jour, le plateau technique de cette formation reste on ne peut plus sauver. Or, cette localité est très souvent le théâtre d'accidents mortels, volant alors qu'elle marchait paisiblement et prudemment le long de la route. Monsieur le ministre, c'est un cri de détresse que je lance. J'espère qu'il sera entendu. Me tournant à présent vers le ministre en charge du développement urbain, je voudrais relayer les cris de détresse des habitants de certains quartiers de la capitale de notre pays. Mimboman 3, Etam Bafia, Nkolombo, ils sont nombreux, Monsieur le ministre. Ces quartiers de la zone urbaine de Yaoundé confrontés à l'inaccessibilité en raison de l'état de dégradation avancée des voies. Nous pensons, Monsieur le ministre, qu'il est urgent de prendre en compte dans le programme d'urgence en cours certains de ces axes routiers pour permettre à notre cité capitale d'être un milieu de vie agréable pour tous ses habitants. Je voudrais également signaler à votre attention, au cas où vos collaborateurs ne l'auraient pas fait encore, le danger permanent que constitue la voie d'accès du reste très fréquenté reliant le rond-point école publique Bastos à la, rue, à la rue dite Dragage. Depuis plusieurs mois, les usagers assistent impuissants à l'érosion progressive de l'étroite ruelle au point de franchissement de la rivière Mfundi. Il serait indiqué d'y opérer une intervention urgente avant la survenance d'une catastrophe, c'est-à-dire l'effondrement total de ce qui tient encore lieu de chaussée. Voilà quelles étaient mes préoccupations, Monsieur le très honorable président de l'Assemblée nationale, et j'exprime d'avance mes remerciements aux membres du gouvernement pour la prise en compte de ces plaidoyers, afin que le ciel de l'émergence vers, la, vers la, laquelle nous conduit le chef de l'État, Son Excellence Paul Bilia, se dévoile pour l'immense majorité de nos compatriotes. Je vous remercie.